Hello everybody, it is great to be with you once again. Welcome to The John Hardy Show. We've got a great show lined up. We've got a guest in the room. I've got some really interesting content to share about. And of course, we're gonna answer some questions from businesses anywhere in the world. Look out for that. It's gonna be really special. Back in just a short while. Great to be with you. I have in, in the studio with me today, Chris Martin. Welcome, Chris. Great to have you Hi. here. Hi. And uh, we're going to share a story about Chris now. Let me set the scene for you. Chris is one of my new clients. Been with Chris for about three months. And it's a really interesting story how Chris connected and what we've been doing in the meantime. So um, Chris, tell us a little bit about who Chris Martin is because uh, it'll be really good for the people watching okay. and listening to you, so, who you are. So I, um, I'm, uh, I started off doing picture framing um, when I was a kid and I also enjoyed running and things like that. So um, I ended up developing a love of art and as, as things happen, you know, you, you, you sort of pick it up yourself when I started learning, learning to do art, um, but never really thought I could make much out of it. So. Um, it always sort of stayed a bit of a hobby for me, um, and same same with doing like my running and everything like that. So um, life gets in the way. You have you have kids and family and everything like that. So I, I just focused on working full time at that point, um, doing picture framing, which is a job I really love. You know. Um, mm. and, and you're quite yeah. good at it, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I, I I really enjoyed picture framing. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, there was always this sort of driving passion yes. to, to do art and things like that. So, but I just was never sure I could do anything with it. So Yeah. And so we had a conversation one day, I'm um, walking out of the framing business that you were a part of and you said to me, Hey John, maybe we should have a conversation. Yes. Yes. I think I, I said I need help. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. yeah so, and, and that was only, what, just over three months ago? Yeah. And we've met since then, haven't we? On a number yes, of occasions yeah. and had some really interesting conversations. So yep. tell us why you actually needed to meet with a coach. Um, I, well, I, I had no idea what the process of coaching was when I first met you. You. Yep. I just knew that you, you did coaching and I thought, well, okay. I haven't done anything with my career thus far. Um, I had a lot of people who were interested in waiting for me to do something with it, but I couldn't put all the pieces together and I just, I didn't have the um, confidence to feel like I could go it and do it myself. Um, that being said, I, I sort of knew all the talent was there to do it. I just didn't feel like I was ready to make that step. Um, so I, and it was, I was in a very safe place. I was in a very good framing job. And um, you've got kids and family and everything like that and a mortgage and, you know, the, the idea of leaving your, your job or um, pursuing uh, a career in art um, when you've already got a steady job is a very frightening prospect yes um, for me so. because the reality is you're going to go in the big wide world of commerce you're going to put your artwork up and the question is will people buy my artwork and that's quite a was quite a challenge in thinking through that process wasn't it there was also the the question of whether or not I would have the drive to yep. do it after I took it up full time because at the moment I'd been doing it as a hobby and I knew people were interested in what I did but I wasn't sure if I when I focused all of my effort on it if the, the love would stay there or the passion for doing the art so yeah. so with, let, let's touch on that we're yeah. three months down tell us what it's feeling like now and then we'll go back to the beginning as well so how's it feeling now about that love for the art and the, the passion the drive would have to be tenfold now wow. um, the um, 
the 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 subject matter, um, the the sort of detail that I'm looking to get into my work, um, and even the size and um, the grandeur of the paintings is changing quite dramatically over time. So, um, in very short period mm, of time, very so, um, absolutely. Yeah, I'm tackling subject matters that I wouldn't have before, and the response has been really good. Yeah. So, really, really positive response. So, is that, how, how much has that surprised you, knowing I'm going to step into this, and yet now, three, only three months later, a ten times passion, and I know where I want to go next year. How much has that surprised you? Um... Substantial. I, I mean, I yeah. it, it just I would that would not be the res, the result that I would have expected. Mm. Um, I, I mean, even initially when we first started talking, I I said, oh, I I um I, I want to sell maybe like twenty paintings a year, and I, I think you know now in hindsight that was a very silly thing to to come up with in my head because I I was still looking at it when we first started yes. as a hobby, and I hadn't actually made the the, the transition to thinking about it as um, uh, as a profession and yeah. and pursuing um, so just doing one painting or something it's not uh, th there's always this drive to move on to the next one to see what I can actually achieve um, yeah yeah so you've got quite a lot of creativity and you've got some strategies in place for that so we'll come to yeah. those so tell us some of the journey you've gone on personally in in wrestling with your own ability to actually step into this place now of, I am going to be Chris Martin, the artist, full time, and I'm gonna display my works to the world. So tell me some of the struggles you've actually gone through. Um, probably the, 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 the biggest one was um, obviously again, financially, kids, mortgage, home, um, trying to make sure that I've got a roof over my head and everything like yes. that. Um, that, I mean, it's, it's, I knew that if I did the work, it would come in, but it was still a very, very big burden and stress. And, mm. and then um, having you there, uh, it, it was helpful to know that I was heading the right direction, even though it felt like I was going completely the wrong way. Yes. Um, yeah. So that, that, from that aspect of coaching was, I found really helpful um, it, because I, I, and you can fall on it, I hate it quite easily. I think yes. there was more than one occasion I rang you up and said, I yes. really need to talk. I'm yes. not coping yes. with what was, what was happening really yeah. quick for me. I, well, and it's happened very quickly, yeah. the fact that you've stepped into this, you've painted, you've sold, you've stepped away from full-time work, you've had a art, in a sense, a display. Mm. Um, what do we call them? It was an art trail. An art trail, so, yes. And I, you put yeah. a number of your works up for people to come and, and look at. You've mm. had great results from that. We won't tell them how well you've done just yet, but it's been really quite rapid and it's confirmed a lot that to you, tell us about what it's telling you now about you as an artist and as a um, where you could grow. Um, it's pretty much just confirmed to me, uh, which is uh, a very hard thing to do in my situation. When you've worked for 18 years to, um, in doing picture framing, that now I need to be in the studio doing work. Mm. Um, that's what I need to do. I need to be um, honing my skills and, and growing as an artist. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those... That's probably the, the big key development as far as me continuing my work. And you've had your work assessed by a gallery. Tell us about that experience for and you. It's, it's up and down. Yeah. Um, uh, in some cases, they, a gallery might have their customers' um, interest in mind, but they, uh, in some cases they, they want to tell, uh, you, know, tell you, oh, like I had a gallery mm. down south, um, the way I see Margaret River and things like that is it can be quite a, um, uh, the weather is quite a key factor down there. So I painted a scene that was, that was quite um, stormy um, and a great painting. I loved the painting. Um, sent the picture to them. I knew it was a good painting. And they said that the picture, um, although it was a great picture, they really need to represent um, uh, 
the subject matter in a way that people like to buy when okay. they're here. Yeah. But um, a comment like that would really knock me back previously yes. because yes. I would feel very disheartened that I felt like I'd done a really good painting. I'm coming to terms now with the um, being able to talk to a gallery have them say something that is uh, not not what I was expecting and then move on very quickly and then actually produce something more around the the aspect that they're looking yeah, for. Yeah. So. And, and it's really important in business, isn't it? Yeah. You, you've raised the finance question. It's really important for businesses to actually know and understand the financial world. Yeah. And so what, what have we done in that to help you? Uh, sorry? Uh, uh, with, with your finances, we've done something very deliberate to help you because it's not your strength, is it? No, 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 no. I had to get someone else to handle that. So um, I, it was uh, coming to the realisation that some of these things were taking a lot of time away from and a lot of uh, placing a lot of mental stress on me. So I had to, I initially tried to do it myself. Yes, you that, did failed. Yes. Um, I have found myself some days sitting at home trying to work through problems and taking hours at a time out of my schedule to try and sort out something that I had no business doing. And I, it took me a while to come to the conclusion. Um, but I, upon doing that, now I've just spent that time going to the studio to do the work that I should mm. be doing. And, a lot yeah. of businesses business leaders and owners don't get that quick enough. They still play in areas where they're not proficient, rather than either hiring staff or outsourcing. And what we've done in this context, we've outsourced to a, a competent bookkeeper to look after your finances, mm. which is really helpful because it has done something for you. It's freed your mind, brain, and time to excel in what you excel in, and that mm. is, in being an artist. Well, uh, as you said, my goal was uh, never to be wealthy or anything like mm. that. The goal was I wanted to travel around the country yes. doing art, yes. displaying in galleries yes. um, with my family. Yes. Um, and th the goal wasn't to sit around doing bookkeeping so no, I could save true. a heap of money and things like that's that. Right, so that's it was, right. it yeah. was um, I'm happy with mm. just letting someone else do it and paying for that service. Yeah, because we want yeah. you to operate off your strengths. Yeah. This is what I tell clients all the time is work to your strengths, either staff to your weaknesses or outsource to your weaknesses. So for me, I outsource my admin. If I get too swamped with that, I've got a very good um, admin support, send all my stuff and it gets done so much yeah. quicker, easier and better yeah. than I could ever do it. And yeah. then I feel, oh, that's great. Got to do that more. So yes. Well, and, and yes. since my, I mean, that that decision only happened probably about three weeks ago to just mm. pass it off. Mm. Since doing that, the stress has been taken away, and the stress is the mm. biggest factor. Yeah. So it's, it was um, even when the money started coming in for the work, the stress was huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. It turned from a money issue to a stress issue. Yeah. And taking yes. that away was. Yeah. Fantastic. So it's taken the stress away, it's taken the money challenge away, and it's helping you focus on what you're good at. Yeah. It's, you've also discovered something else, I think, Chris, about this time you now have available, and you're actually doing something else unique with your time. Tell us a little bit about what happens first thing in the morning. Oh, okay. So first thing in the morning, um, I get up and do a uh, short run just to kick off my day. So this morning was just like a 5K run. Um, and further on top of that, it's given me some time to reassess areas of my life. So I was quite a competent runner when I was young. Um, but what I've started doing now is using that spare time, because um, I can only do roughly five hours in the studio mm. and I get quite, um, I get migraines and things like that. It's um, full on, very, very into my work when I'm working. So I need that time away. So. Uh, what I've done is worked out that I need to actually incorporate um, some physical exercise. Mm. So I, I, I do marathon running now. Yes. So. And you've got a, an interesting target for your marathon running. Tell us about that. So last year I, um, I met up with a young bloke and um, he was quite a confident runner. So we started doing about Christmas time last year. We started training. I was only running maybe about 20K a week or so. Um, I started training with him. 
He's already got a coach, but we just teamed up as training partners. Um, he ended up running, he, he had a marathon time of like four and a half hours, which is not bad, mm -hmm. but um, uh, it's not competitive for no, anything not, like no. that. Yeah. So we ended up training for six months. He, uh, he ended up uh, ninth in the state championships. And I, I just, I was in the top 20, but mm. um, that I, I hadn't actually spent enough time training yeah, yet. Yeah. So as we go on, um, now I've, uh, I ended up uh, 13th in the city to surf. And now with the, the business going the way it is, I can actually spend more time focusing on, on other aspects um, of things that I feel I'm talented at as well, mm. uh, which is running. So next year, it's uh, a plan to get into the sort of top five sort mm. of area of um, the, the major races in Western Australia. That's fantastic. So, fantastic. Yeah. And I think there is something about renewing the soul with what we enjoy doing yeah. when we know I've got work to do. Yeah. And my work is five, six hours concentrated painting and you're using pastel, yeah. you're a pastel yeah. artist, yeah. Well, we'll come and describe that in a minute, um, and the fact that you're renewing your own soul and physique yeah. by running and, and enjoying that, and, and you're very good at it. Yeah, so uh, it's, I suppose it's now um, the art is my job, I love mm. my job. Yes. Um, the running is now the hobby. Yes, so, yes. you know, it's, uh, it's at that little... And you've made that switch, again, really quickly, from the challenge of, I for 18 years have been employed, now I'm in business for myself. Tell us about that transition from employment to work that you're confident I now own my space, that I'm running my own business and I'm, I'm committed to it. Um, it's even, like I said before, even with the money coming in, it didn't feel, it still felt uncomfortable for quite some time. I think I needed to start doing those things, having my, my hobbies and things like mm -hmm. that, and to start treating work as work. So up, up early this morning, go for a run, um, straight, uh, come back home, straight into the studio, have a, uh, we'll have a coffee and straight into the studio. Um, so I was in the studio working at about 7.30 and wow. then, um, yeah, yeah. I'm here for the, for the meeting this Fantastic. afternoon. Fantastic. The, the, so yeah, it's great. Midday, so. And then you've got a client to go and see and do yep, some follow-up with. Yeah, to go see and then I'll go home and continue working yeah, this afternoon. Yeah, it's so. so again, so finances have been going well. You've yep. got that sorted. You've understood about work-life balance because yep. that's been important yes, part, yep. part of our conversation. It's really good for you as a person to run, so you're doing that. So like for me, I've started swimming again. Yep. I, I, I can do lap yep. after lap. Yep. I love it. Yep. And when I did my first K... I was absolutely first yeah. stoked in a session to swim for a K. I felt great. Yeah. It's really good for us. And we know then when we're working, we're working. Yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. balance. And, yeah. and even things. I mean, it was, it was hard to begin with for the first, I would say, two months. Mm. Because I, the goal was never initially to get money in it. It was mm. just to start doing the work. Mm. And it just... It got yes. harder and harder and harder, but um, now I'm starting to claw some of that, yes, that absolutely. back. Um, so what the first one of the first things we did, we, we talked about how could you, you could show off your artwork, and there happened to be in the re, in the region where you live an yeah. art trail. So tell us about an art yeah. trail, and tell us about what you did. Okay, so. Um, I don't really have a huge social media presence, but um, I I, uh, I knew the art trail was coming up. Um, I knew I'd started working with John. Um, so an art trail is uh, basically a set up by the council, um, in this case City of Armadale, where they have um, multiple studios that um, the, the community can go visit. So I didn't have, uh, initially the I was asked to do it the year before. I turned it down because I didn't have the right space. I felt very uncomfortable with showing my work um, because of the, the 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 space that I had to display. So, um, with that in mind, I wasn't going. I learned that doing nothing, you get nothing. So <laughs> I thought That's right. with, <laughs> without having the space. Um, to display my work, and I, and I work, um, I, I worked out of a shed. Mm, um, that's right, yes, that just a tin shed. Yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> I, I thought, well, you know what, um, 
the work's good. I know people will enjoy the work. Mm. I'm going to do it this year. Mm. So, and with your guidance, yeah. uh, we set about um, setting that as a target. So, And we discovered something where you live, a great place to show off your work. Yeah. Which was yeah. what? Uh, back decking. Yeah. So it wasn't finished at the time. Um, it needed it needed a lot of work, so we, we put in some uh, a fair bit of um, time and effort. Um, I got handy with the tools, and we set up some nice display areas and um, some gallery lighting and mm. things like that. And we set up quite a nice little little space to display the work, and it was it was a lovely feeling to be able to mm. display my work the way I wanted and have full control over it. Yes. Um, there's a lot of circumstances where you'll go into like a group exhibition and, and you don't have control over that. So mm. if the lighting's not quite right or anything, mm. I mean, halfway through the trail, I realised that there was two paintings that didn't have lights situated on mm. them the way I want. So I could just go out get some more lights, have them installed. It's done. great. Yeah, and it's it was, great. Uh, having that control yeah. over the space was um, worth, worth more than yeah. going into any sort of gallery Absolutely. space. So. Tell us what happened on the trail for you, um, which was quite unexpected, wasn't it? Yeah, we, I, I set out to... I didn't really set out to really sell a lot of no. work. I had a few galleries that were interest, starting to become quite interested in my work. So I never really set out to sell much. I didn't think um, many people would turn up. And we deliberately um, didn't put prices on. No. Because it was there to be a gallery just to show off your work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to avoid putting prices yeah. on, we just had a little booklet. If people were interested, they could have a look through the booklet. So, um, And yeah, I mean, the, it went far better than I expected. It, um, you started selling paintings, yeah, didn't you? Um, first, first lady came. It was a friend of mine. So the reason I didn't put, I didn't want to put prices on them as well, is because I have a lot of friends, and I, I'm still learning. I mm. still get uncomfortable about my friends coming around and you say how much a painting is. And they're yes. like, oh. <laughs> so, so, but a lot of effort goes into yeah, it. It has right. to be that price for me to, to how to make a living out of mm. it. So. Um, first, first, uh, customer I had that came through, um, was a friend, uh, of a friend who came from New South Wales. Um, I'd never even sold something over East. Uh, mm. they came through the exhibition and I was shocked when they all of a sudden said, Look, can we have, we'll have that one. Mm. It's, it's, uh, it was, yeah, that was the moment. There. Yes. <laughs> that was, and that happened. Every weekend over the three weekends, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. People bought your art. And even making on the spot decisions. Yes. She said, don't do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, we really wanted to back off. Yeah. We didn't want to try to do any closing or selling or anything. We just wanted to let yeah. people experience your work and then tell the story. Yeah. yeah. So there was a deliberate act, wasn't there? We, we talked quite a lot about the strategy about what we would do with your product. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. Mm. And you sold. Yes. And you sold. Yes. And you sold. Yes. So um, it's been quite substantial and that's kind of been quite unexpected how yes. well your product has gone. So tell us about that sense of feeling about how well it's actually gone when you presented your product to the marketplace. It, it went um, a lot better than I thought. I still have work to do to convince the galleries, but the mm. public response has been mm. phenomenal. Yeah. Um, it's taught me that I, I don't have to be scared or worried that I'm not going to make it if a gallery says, look, we really want you to do bright sunny paintings. This painting of down south is, is, yes. is too too cloudy for mm. what we want. I, I've, I've painted a, a, a fair, like, range of yes. artworks that were in yes. that exhibition and there wasn't one that stood out to uh, to a particular yeah. Uh, yeah. everyone would find their own painting that mm. they liked there wasn't one particular yeah. subject matter that would stand out so you had a certain amount of stock and you pretty much sold out yes your stock yes which has blown you away hasn't it yes I'm very busy now so. <laughs> so tell us what that's done for you as far as going forward now knowing that People really do like your product. Um, 
I, I suppose it's I can now focus on um, one getting the work quality better. Yes. I feel that there is so much more I can do with the the work. I just need the time. And now I have the time. Yeah. Second of all, it's um, it's just a case of getting the paintings in front of people. Mm. Um, it, previously, I thought, well, I had to get the paintings framed to just send them to a gallery. And sometimes the galleries, uh, they'll, they'll just sit them on the floor. I can't really control lighting and things like that. Now it's I've literalised that I have to get the galleries out to the public. So um, in a lot of cases, I wouldn't really rush to get a painting out to show people. Because I thought, well, it'll sell. But in that case, no one sees the painting, so no one knows what I do, and then no one can purchase the painting. Yes. yes. So now I'm starting to look into how. Uh, so one of the thing, another thing that came from the art trail is I realised how easy it is to ship a painting over yes. east. Yes. Yes. Um, so now I'm starting to look at how I can um, market myself on a national level mm. um, and then also um, that looking into, um, because art across Australia varies quite wildly um, as far as the styles and, and things. So starting to even research um, mm. the, the, the styles and how, how our artwork's done in the Eastern States. So Very cool. So tell us about... What is a pastel artist? Because I've seen the studio. Well, tell, tell us what you do with your studio first, because it was a shed. Okay, yeah. So let's talk about that, because that's really important. So, yeah, the, I, um, I used to do my art inside the house, and I got kicked out very quickly, because um, anyone that's worked with pastels would know how messy it is. It's a dry chalk medium, so it um, creates a lot of dust. This dust is pure pigment. Um, it gets on everything. So... I very quickly got um, shunted out of the house and moved out to the shed. Um, I insulated the shed with some panelling and tidied it up as best I could um, and then designed ways to work. So I worked standing up with the artwork strapped against the wall um, and all the pastel dust falls down and behind the sheet so it keeps the space clean and tidy. So, But and what was it before you did that? Come on, own up. What was the shed before it, it was became a your shed? Just a guess. <laughs> <laughs> and what was in it? Ah, uh, everything. That's yes, right. <laughs> From motorbikes to yes. yeah. lawnmowers. Yes. <laughs> so you actually did something very clearly. This is my art studio. Yes, and I had yes. to remove everything out of there. I do keep two items in there, okay. which yeah. are kayaks, but they yeah. I keep them in there because they sort of remind me of like uh, what I, the goal is. I, mm. I go away on holidays and things like that. And Great. that's my goal was to travel, as I yes. told you, with yes. the family. And, yes. things. and one of the things I, I like doing is going out in like Cape Range National Park and Exmouth and um, that and uh, up around um, uh, just basically any coastal yeah, yeah. regions yeah. with my kayaks and yeah. that. And a lot of my work is coastal, so yes. keep the kayaks there as a yeah, reminder. That's of, great, yeah. Yeah. Because that I, is your objective, isn't yeah. it? Now you do something interesting to actually get the kind of artwork you want to paint. So how do you figure that out? What do you do? So I take multiple images. Um, so basically a camera doesn't really capture everything um, it captures you know, yes. what's that, whatever's in the frame. So I generally take a whole um, series of photos of the same area and then um, use different aspects of each photo. So because basically when you take a photo, if there's more light and it's some areas will be burnt out and mm. vice versa. So that changes lighting. Uh, so you get a better idea of the burnt out areas in a photograph and that if you're using multiple, many, many images. So from that, I put them all together and then I, I can't paint places I haven't been to because visually mm. I take in a lot when I'm there. So yes. um, uh, everything down to just like the wind. Um, so you can capture wind in paintings. It's, it's hard to do, but there are things that give it away like the, the disturbance on top of the water and things mm. like that. So if, um, if I haven't been somewhere, I don't feel that. So mm. I have to have been there. So I take these photos as reference, I put them all together, and then I can do a larger format um, that actually is more representative of how we actually see 
um, mm. nature. Yes. Yeah. So you're also a photographer. I wouldn't say photographer. <laughs> I, I, um, I I suppose if I if I wanted to do photography, it would be there. Um, yeah. But I take the pictures purely for my yes. my yes. Um, my artwork. And this is your research, isn't it? So yeah. you're researching regions yep. to capture the the spirit or the, the essence yes, of it. Yep. So you've got something both in your mind, in your heart, in your passions, yep. but also tangibly that you can work with and say, put all of those together. Yeah, so um, uh, like for instance, I went down to Margaret River two weeks ago. Um, Margaret River coastline is quite a, um, a fierce coastline. Mm. It's, not, it's not pretty and sunny no, all the time. Not, no. So um, I ended up painting a picture that was quite dark and gloomy but very dramatic um i wouldn't have seen that if i hadn't been there and done the research there yes. was other beaches i went to to take photos but there was nothing there when i went yeah there. yeah i know there's normally good shots yes there, but this time i i couldn't see what i was looking for and yeah. walk away so that, i suppose yeah. that's the, the research you're going down there looking for yeah. that that inspiration and subject matter and, and it's really important in business to know what are our foundations that's mm. going to be substantive to help us move forward. And you've got some really good principles in place, Chris, already in a very short period of time for a young business person, you're doing absolutely phenomenal in what you're doing. Thank you. You, you really are. And a little bit down the track, when you get more experienced, you'll look back and realize, I really did okay. Um, and, you, and as long as we keep practicing these kinds of principles as we mm. continue to grow and go forward, because we want, the, the objective is to paint well and to become Chris Martin the artist that is known in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Well, if I do that, I can travel around Australia, not Absolutely. just WA. Abs <laughs> Absolutely. So tell, tell our listeners and our viewers what it means for you in this journey of having a coach uh, working with you. Um, it's, it's sort of um, meant that I haven't been able to back off and do uh, what I would have done in the past where yes. things, things start to get a bit difficult and you just, I just crawl back into my little corner and do, do framing and just drop back out of the yes. spotlight. Yes. Um, there's been times where I've had a lot of people um, needing my attention for one reason or another. Um, and those are the times where I just say, well, it's all too hard. I just back off. So mm. having the conversations with you has brought it back in line, um, brought me back up to the, to the starting mat sort of thing and, and you know, ready to go again. Yeah. So um, without a coach yet, yeah, it would be very difficult to continue. Yeah, because you, like you said very early on, one of the areas that you've struggled with is that confidence, that self-belief. Yeah. I yeah. know people kind of say, but... Am I prepared to step into that space? And having a, a, um, a confidant coach mm. in your world, and I know I do the well, same you thing. Were, you were telling me this yes. is normal. And, not, and yes. my wife would say the same thing as well. She yes. says everybody in business has this struggle. Yes. So, and it's, it's sort of uh, being told a, a number yeah. of ways yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and it, it is true, Chris. So, yeah. uh, and you'll get to know other business people as they've worked it through and they'll tell you their stories. Say, oh, yeah, I went through something similar. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Really yeah, is I, great. They don't teach you any of this no, at art school. No, they, so. no, they don't. <laughs> no. But you, you've got some innate understandings and you figured a few things out very quickly. So it's been really great to have you in the studio to tell your story because what I wanted, a young business, so people can realize that, you know, when is it time to get a coach at any time and, and, and a coach can actually help you in all sorts of dynamics and ways. Yeah. And that's the power of what we want to do is to help businesses. And my motto on my show is we want to help people do business better. Yeah, I, it's one of the things when I first like, because for, for someone who's uh, considering, you know, starting a business and everything, it's a lot of money up front. Yes. And it was one of those things where I, I sat down and I said to Joss, and she goes, oh, why can't you just do it yourself? And I said, if I could do it myself, I would have already done it. And if the worst case scenario is it's just that money is, is, is 
going nowhere and and it's like well it's, that's not going to be the end of the world but the other the other side of it is that little that contribution to myself could be life-changing yes. and it has been for me and that's interesting that yes you might be paying me but you know you're investing in yourself hmm. which is really powerful so what advice would you give um, people listening and watching this story today um, I suppose if you if, if you were to if you have a, a business idea at least talk to someone about it get an, an idea of where you stand I think we sat down and had yes, that conversation yes we did um, and get an idea if there is something to work with um, in my case I, it was there. I just needed someone to tell me it's there. Yeah. You need to try. Yeah. So, and you've been blown away by the results, yeah. and you're very confident about your future. Yeah. yeah and yeah. we're excited about your future. Yeah. Very cool. I am. I, oh, I am as well. It's really cool. So, thank you for being in the studio, folks. It's been really great to share with you Chris Martin's story. He's three months in business, doing outstandingly well. You've heard the principles that he shared. Pick them up for yourself so you can do business better.